Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Rye Free Reading Room Tales for Tots program. My name is Granny Jean, and I certainly hope that you're all be, uh, with us today, nannies and mommies and daddies, and uh, help us support the program, playing along with your children and interacting with the program. Very hard to do <laughs> on a video, but it's most important for your child's uh, uh, benefit from the program itself. So anyway, here we go. <clears throat> and everyone, the more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. For your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Oh, sure we will. Well, look what's here. A little caterpillar, and Arabella found it on the patio. Little Arabella Miller had a fuzzy caterpillar. First it crawled upon her mother, then upon her baby brother. They said, little Arabella Miller, take away your caterpillar. Little Arabella Miller had a fuzzy caterpillar. Next it crawled upon big brother, <laughs> then upon her dear grandmother. Grand said, little Arabella Miller, how I love your caterpillar. Oh, what a nice grandma, huh? <clears throat> I bet she was a teacher too. Little Arabella Miller had a fuzzy caterpillar. First it crawled upon her mother, then upon her baby brother. They said, little Arabella Miller, take away your caterpillar. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, little Arabella Miller had a fuzzy caterpillar. Next, it crawled upon Big Brother, then upon her dear grandmother. Grand said, Little Arabella Miller, how I love your caterpillar. <laughs> oh, they are fun and they're so soft. You must be very careful because they're very fragile, very delicate. They get hurt very easily. Well, I see a barn. And what did we say last week? If there's a barn, there must be a farmer nearby. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Most generally, yes. And here he is. Here he is. Oh, the farmer in the dell, the farmer in the dell. Hi ho, the dairy, oh, the farmer in the dell. Who's he going to take? See if you can guess. The farmer takes a wife. The farmer takes the wife. Hi, oh, the dairy, oh, the farmer takes the wife, and the wife takes the who? The child, the wife takes the child. Hi, oh, the dairy, oh, the wife takes the child, and the child takes the nurse. The child takes the nurse. Hi, oh, the dairy, oh, the child takes the nurse, and the nurse takes the dog. The nurse takes the dog. Hi, oh, the dairy, oh, the nurse takes the dog. And the dog takes the cat. The dog takes the cat. Hi ho, the dairy. Oh, the dog takes the cat. And the cat takes the what's that? Rat. The cat takes the rat. Hi ho, the dairy. Oh, the cat takes the rat. And the rat takes the cheese. The rat takes the cheese. Hi ho, the dairy. Oh. The rat takes the cheese. Oh no, smelly cheese. Oh, who was the first to run away? Do you remember? Oh, the rat runs away, the rat runs away. Hi ho, the dairy, oh, the rat runs away. And the cat runs away, the cat runs away. Hi ho, the dairy, oh, the cat runs away. <coughs> and the dog runs away, the dog runs away. Hi ho, the dairy, oh, the dog runs away. And the nurse runs away. The nurse runs away. Hi ho, the dairy. Oh, the nurse runs away. And the child runs away. The child runs away. Hi ho, the dairy. Oh, the child runs away. And the wife runs away. The wife runs away. Hi ho, the dairy. Oh, the wife runs away. And the farmer runs away. The farmer runs away. Hi ho, the dairy. Oh, the wife. Farmer runs away and the cheese stands alone. The cheese stands alone. 
Hi ho the dairy, oh the cheese stands alone. Oh, I love smelly cheese. Yum. <clears throat> May not smell very nice, but it certainly is yummy. It certainly is yummy. <clears throat> oh, cute. Well, <clears throat> Wizzy Wizard has a tip today. Wizzy, where are you? Well, you're there somewhere, I know. Ah. You running away from me, huh? <clears throat> Wizzy Wizard, what is your tip today? Well, babies love books that have big, bright pictures of things that they know. And um, uh, what you do is you talk about that picture um, and you um, uh, tell it what you're seeing. You're seeing, a, say, if it's an apple, a big red apple, and then maybe if you have an apple, you can show them uh, what a, a real apple is and um, talk about it and maybe bite into it and maybe cook it so that they know that's applesauce. Um, <clears throat> children, <clears throat> when they start getting the idea that a picture represents an object, then pretty soon they'll uh, get the idea that a word represents an object too. So there we are. <clears throat> <clears throat> well, my first book today <clears throat> has to do with rain, as you might guess, since we have a, a rain cloud over there. But I do see a, a do I see a rainbow peeking out? Mushrooms in the Rain by Mary Ginsburg. Look at all those little creatures keeping dry under all those different mushrooms, different colors and different sizes. Mushrooms in the rain. And look at the little creature that we're going to talk about first. What is that? It's a little red ant, isn't it? <coughs> oh, I see a storm cloud. You see a big storm cloud? Very dark. That means there's a lot of rain in there. <coughs> One day, an ant was caught in the rain. Where can I hide? He wondered. Oh, I'm gonna get so wet. He saw a tiny mushroom, a little teen tiny mushroom, pecking, uh, peeking out of the ground in a clearing and he hid under it. And he sat there waiting for the rain to stop. And there he is going into the mushroom and trying to fit under it so that he keeps dry and then he finally gets under it and oh boy is that rain coming down hard oh, a wet butterfly crawls up to the mushroom cousin aunt let me come in from the rain i am so wet i cannot fly better <clears throat> oh but there is barely room enough for one Oh, it does not matter, said the butterfly, better crowded than wet. And the ant moved over and, uh, uh, and made room for the butterfly and down the rain came hard. And look at that, the ant is helping the butterfly and pushing the wings together and, and getting it, uh, the butterfly, so that they're all, both of them are dry. Hmm. A mouse ran up, <clears throat> let me in under the mushroom. I am drenched to the bone. How can we let you in? There is no room uh, here. Oh, just one move a little closer. Oh, they huddled closer and let the mouse in and the rain came down and came down and would not stop. And there the mouse is trying to squeeze under that little mushroom and they all push and push and push. And finally, they're all under the mushroom <clears throat> and that rain is really coming down a little sparrow hopped up to the mushroom crying oh my feathers are dripping my wings are so tired let me in under the mushroom to dry out and rest until the rain stops but there is no room here please move over just a little they moved over and there was enough room for the sparrow there they are pushing and pulling and squeezing. And then finally, they are all under the mushroom. 
keeping dry. Then a rabbit hopped into the clearing and saw the mushroom. Oh, hide me, he cried, save me. A fox is chasing me. Poor rabbit, said the ant. Let's crowd ourselves a little more and take him in. And then they squeezed and squeezed and squeezed and hid the rabbit. And there they are all under the mushroom. Aha, as soon as they hid the rabbit, the fox came running. Oh, and here they are hiding, <laughs> hiding the rabbit. Have you seen the rabbit? Which way did he go? He asked. Oh, we have not seen him. <clears throat> the fox came nearer and sniffed. There is a rabbit smell around. Isn't he hiding here? Oh, you silly fox. How could a rabbit get in here? Don't you see there isn't any room? The fox turned up his nose, flicked his tail, and ran off. <laughs> and they did a pretty good job of, of, of hiding, didn't they? And if, yeah, the rabbit was always on the other side of the mushroom when he came around. <laughs> ah, by then the rain was over. The sun looked out from behind the clouds and everyone came out from under the mushrooms, mushroom bright and merry. And there they are, all in the middle of the clearing. See them right down there? I see a big rainbow too, don't you? <clears throat> oh, the ant looked at his neighbors. How could this be? At first I had hardly room enough under the mushroom just for myself. And in the end, all five of us were able to sit under it. Look at that. <laughs> Somebody laughed loudly behind them. They turned and saw a fat green frog sitting on top of the mushroom, shaking his head at them. <laughs> Said the frog, don't you know what happens? to a mushroom in the rain? And he hopped away, still laughing. <laughs> the ant, the butterfly, the mouse, the sparrow and the rabbit looked at one another, then at the mushroom and suddenly they knew why there was enough room under the mushroom for them all. Look, there's the ant now. That doesn't look like the same picture that we had in the beginning, does it? Do you know? Can you guess what happens to a mushroom when it rains, huh? Bigger and bigger. And bigger and bigger. Wow. It grows, right. It grows very quickly too, especially if it's very wet out. Well, do you know the colors of the rainbow? Purple, blue, and green, my friend. Yellow, orange, and red at the end. Well, let's do it with a fruit, shall we? Do you know the colors of the rainbow? Purple, blue, and green, my friend. Yellow, orange, and red at the end. There we are. Yeah. Those are fruits. That's what we eat. That's good for us. And this is a plum. These are blueberries green grapes, yellow banana, an orange orange, and a red apple. Two red apples, actually. <clears throat> That's what we have. We have a rainbow of fruit and a rainbow in the sky. And we need water for both of them. Which, that's why we like to see the rain, right? Sure, sure. Well, I have something here in the, sitting in my garden. What is this? A bullfrog, bullfrog. 
Now, Jack Polutsky has wonderful, wonderful poems for very young children. And this one is a book that I have, Ride a Purple Pel Pelican. And in it is a poem about bullfrogs. And here they are in their parade costumes. Look at that. Bullfrogs, bullfrogs on parade, dressed in gold and green brocade, scarlet buttons on their suits, fringes on their bumber shoots. And there they are, the fringes. See them tip their satin hats as they bounce like acrobats. Hear them croak a serenade. Bullfrogs, bullfrogs on parade. Yeah, that's how they sound. Boom, 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 boom. That's Jack Polutsky poem. <clears throat> well, here's another book about them. <clears throat> now, some of you may be too young to remember <clears throat> a thunderstorm. And that's when it rains very hard and, and there's lightning and the lightning cuts the air in half and then it goes back together with a, with a rumble and a crack. Yeah. This is Listen to the Rain by Bill Martin Jr. and John Archibald. And this is a poem and I think it's a very sweet poem. Listen to the rain. There. And that, that might be a moth, I'm not sure. It looks like a moth. A moth is like a butterfly, but they fly at night. Right. Listen to the rain. The whisper of the rain. The slow, soft sprinkle, the drip, drop, tinkle. <clears throat> the first wet whisper of the rain. Listen to the rain, the sighing of the rain. The tiptoe pitter patter, the splish and splash and splatter. The steady sound, the singing of the rain. Listen to the rain, the roaring, pouring rain. The hurly burly, topsy turvy, oh, lashing, gnashing teeth of rain. Oh, that's when the thunder comes, right? Mm -hmm. and lightning flashing, thunder crashing, sounding, pounding, roaring rain. Listen to the uh, uh, leaving all outdoors a muddle, a mishy, mushy, muddy puddle. <clears throat> Listen to the quietude, the silence and the solitude of after rain. That is butterfly. The dripping, dripping, dropping, the slowly, slowly stopping. I see the sun. The fresh, wet, silent after time of rain. So when if it's raining someplace and the sun is still shining where you are, sometimes you can look up in the sky and what, see a rainbow? Yes. <coughs> well, <clears throat> there's some other little creature that likes the rain and that is the duck. And this is another Perlutsky uh, poem. I'm a yellow-billed duck with a black feathered back, and I waddle, 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 and I quack, quack, quack. I dabble for my dinner with a swish, 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 and I gobble, 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 all I wish, wish, wish. Yeah. And that's what ducks do when they are looking for their <clears throat> dinner. They tip their fannies right up, and their head is down under the water and looking for their dinner. <clears throat> I'm a yellow-billed duck with a black feathered back, and I waddle, 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 and I quack, quack, quack. 
I dabble for my dinner with a swish, swish, swish. And I gobble, 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 all I wish, wish, wish. <clears throat> well, let's see, we talked about a bunny going under the, under the, um, under the mushroom. But here's a little poem. Bunnies are brown and bunnies are white. And bunnies are always a childhood delight. Bunnies are cuddly, the large and the small. But I like the chocolate ones best of all. <laughs> you remember a chocolate bunny in your house, huh? Did you have one? <clears throat> bunnies are brown. Bunnies are white, and bunnies are always a springtime delight. Bunnies are cuddly, the large and the small. But I like the chocolate ones best of all. Not really. <coughs> well, <clears throat> let's see. We have a book here about going to bed. Do you like to go to bed, huh? Do you ever went, go to bed on a, a boat? Well, that's what this, these, pe these little uh, animals are doing. The Going to Bed book <clears throat> by uh, Sandra Boynton. <clears throat> the sun has set not long ago. Looks like they're in an arc. Hmm? Now everybody goes below to take a bath in one big tub. Look at that, they're all in the tub. With soap all over, scrub, scrub, scrub. They hang their towels on the wall and find pajamas big and small. There they are in their jammies. I like the way they hung their towels up, do you? With some on top and some beneath, they brush and brush and brush their teeth. And when the moon is on the rise, they all go up to exercise. And there they are. Some are jumping rope, some are lifting barbells, some are doing push-ups. Look at that, some are just running. Oh boy, not sure about that. And down one more, uh, and down once more, but not so fast. They're on their way to bed at last. The day is done. They say good night, and somebody turns off the light. <clears throat> the moon is high. The sea is deep. They rock and rock and rock to sleep. Nice bedtime book for very young children. <coughs> well, I went out into my yard just a few minutes ago and look what I found. These little flowers, they're called Lily of the Valley and they look like little bells, don't they? And there's a song about the Lily of the Valley. And here we are. There's this long green stem. You see the long green stem and the little white bells. <clears throat> and this is a stalk. White coral bells upon a slender stalk. Lilies of the valley on my garden walk. Oh, don't you wish that you could hear them ring? That will only happen when the fairies sing. <laughs> I rang the bell. <clears throat> so let's let's see if Granny Jean can do that and hit the right notes this time. White coral bells upon a slender stalk, lily of the valley on my garden walk. Oh, don't you wish that you could hear them sing? That will only happen when the fairies see. I said that wrong too. White coral bells upon a slender stalk. 
Lily of the valley on my garden wall. Oh, don't you wish that you could hear them ring? That will only happen when the fairies sing. That little bell, that little bell came from my house when I was a little girl. And those are Lily of the Valley. <clears throat> I had a little cherry stone. That's a little bit. I had a little cherry stone and put it in the ground. And next year, when I went to look, a little shoot I found. The shoot grew taller day by day and soon became a tree. I picked those rosy cherries then and had them with my tea. Can you do that with me? Come on. Take a little, pretend you have a little cherry pit. I had a little cherry stone and put it in the ground. And when next year I went to look, a little shoot I found. The shoot grew taller day by day and soon became a tree. I picked those rosy cherries then and had them with my tea. Right. Well, I think it's time to say goodbye. Goodbye to all my bunnies. And goodbye to the little caterpillar. And bye bye to Mr. Frog. It's time to say goodbye. And bye bye to Granny Jean. And bye bye to all my friends. And I hope you have a wonderful week. And I think spring is finally here. <clears throat> so go out and enjoy it. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye. <laughs>